<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Musky Road Rules Podcast number 273. Hard to believe, guys. 273 of these things. And uh, yeah, I still don't know if we've taught anybody anything. But guys are listening, and I do appreciate it. We just finished up the sports show season, and I am really glad to be done. It uh, Yeah, it was a long one this year. We did them, you know, all the musky shows. Uh, it's actually... Uh, Pretty cool thing to see all that going, but uh, nevertheless, guys, tonight's podcast is brought to you by, well, let's think about this, let's do uh, about lax reproductions. Guys, if you are looking for getting a fish on the wall, think about getting a reproduction. Go to lax reproduction, it's real simple, all you got to do is measure Measure the fish, nose to tail, and then uh, you need to get a good girth measurement. And then you send those numbers to him with a couple photos, and he'll make a fish for you. Or if you've never caught a 50-incher and you always wanted one on your wall, well, this is the best way to get it, I think. Uh, and probably the most affordable with as uh, much money as uh, I've been laying out for stuff. So, But uh, guys, think about it. LaxReproduction.com. Shoot us a text. Guys, I'm going to give you out my own number to shoot text to. I'm going to give it out to you right now. It's 606-776-6729. Shoot us a text. That's the Lungeon Lures text line. It's going to be the, uh, it might be the new Lungeon Lures text line, but shoot me a text. 606-776-6729. Nine Lungeon Lures, makers of the 22 Short, 22 Long, and the 22 SS, Big 50 Cal, the Chubby. These guys got a ton of stuff, including blades. You can either get the original Lungeon Tail, DC9, DC10, or the Nutbuster Spinner Bait. So check them out at LungeonLures.com. Tonight, guys, we have two podcast virgins on here. So we have got Josh Borowski from up in Minnesota, and we got Andy Mutz from up in Minnesota as well. So I'm sure you guys know both these from the uh, the sports show, PMTT, uh, Musky Insider. Um, you're going to, uh, we're going to have a little conversation here. So uh, Josh, Andy, how we doing? Doing great. Good. Yeah, likewise. All right, good deal. Can you believe I do that all from memory? I'm very good at I should host game shows. Uh, I'm impressed already. <laughs> I think you should be. You should be. Let me tell you something else that's going to impress you, and it's going to impress all my clients that have to fish with me and listen to me complain about these things. But I did last night. Uh, everybody that fishes with me will love to hear this. I got my 27th deer with my car. Oh, oh man. <laughs> that is how my night went. I've killed 27 of them with my car, or now. I had 26 before last night. Last night was so screwed up. Let me tell you how my last night went. I was going, I was wanting to go check out this new boat ramp. Way, way, it's a pretty good drive from here at Cave Run. So I, I went, everything was going great. You have to drive through um, a lot of you know crappy roads and, and all that. And I check it out. Everything looks good. I'm, you know, hopefully maybe fish, uh, fish a couple new places. But uh, as I was coming back, uh, I've never had this. I had well, I've actually only had this happen one time. As I passed, apparently um, going up there, when I started coming back through, a tree fell on the road. Literally, like three hundred yards in front of me. Boom! Tree in the road. And I don't carry my chainsaws or or anything like that me me acting like i i I own a chainsaw i don't even own a chainsaw um but you know tree in the road shit everywhere i'm like oh i gotta turn around basically you know had to drive all the way back i was probably 20 minutes from home had to drive all the way back an hour and uh came through the other way and the other way produced another deer car is drivable but Josh, how many deer have you hit? I think I'm trying to think. You got me thinking about it. I think we've only hit one that I can think of, and we, we really smashed it. But man, that's that's a crazy number. You hit one. You are clearly not trying hard enough. Um, 
Uh, well, I was going to say, are you like stepping on the gas or the brakes when you? I <laughs> well, here's what I learned, and this is this is from. Um, this is a here's a here's a good little uh, a pearl of wisdom from Uncle Greg. Whenever you hit one, you do not say you swerve the wheel. You always just you hit them. Do not swerve. Hit those things because they are considered uh, no fault in uh, my you know for insurance. So um, thank goodness because uh, my truck has been fixed one month. From the last deer hit, and now man, that's bad luck. We have another deer hit. Andy, how many deer have you hit? Uh, I hit one, and I didn't even kill it. You need to work harder at this. <laughs> Jesus, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know if I killed this one once up in uh, northern Wisconsin, and it was it was like you were saying. I, I ended up taking a wrong turn once out of out of a landing in the dark, and I ended up down a road, and I turned around. And when I was coming back, and, you know, it was a pretty skinny road, there was a big elk, big cow elk just sitting right there. And I'm, I'm very thankful to this day that it never moved. Well, elk, I mean, Jesus Christ, that's like a freaking horse that, uh, they're, I mean, they're huge. Yeah, I was I was shaking a little bit, for sure. You'd have had uh, some explaining to do there. That, uh, Yeah, I've never hit an elk yet, but, you know, there's always tomorrow. Uh, well, <laughs> and, uh, if I had to bet on any of us, I'd bet on you. I would. Oh <laughs> God, yes, that is DraftKings has me at very good odds uh, on this one. But no, I just I hate deer. They just they drive me insane, um, especially when I hit them. But whatever. But guys, let's talk a little bit here, Josh. Why don't you tell guys what you what you got going on? You're you know you're doing the guiding. You do you got the lure company now. You're doing stuff with Muskie Insider. Um, maybe just give guys a little idea of what you got going on. Uh, sure. Uh, well, you know I've been guiding full time now for for almost uh, twenty years. I, I uh, when I was texting you, Greg. I don't know if we'll get to this, but I, I have a really funny memory of. Oh no! I think we should 20- lead with that. Because right. I was telling I the same story not four days ago. I okay. Mean, and I remember, yeah, old, uh, yeah, old dude. So, so this has to be like 1990, what was it, wasn't it like 1999 or something when the PMTT started? Wasn't that the first year? Yeah, it would have been 99 or, or 2000, something like that. I, I think it was the year after, like 2000, but I remember that's how I knew who you were. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I, I like saw you in Muskie Hunter and mm-hmm. that you had won, you know, the whole deal. And then I went down, I was uh, fishing on Green River Lake down in Kentucky and ran into you in a parking lot. You were looking at my rod holders on my boat and we started talking and introduced ourselves to each other. And I, I it might have been that trip, but I feel like it was the next year that I was down there when I when I saw you again, got off the water like went into a Perkins cause it was the only thing open cause it was late hours. And, and there you were, you know, with some buddies like at your booth. And, and mm-hmm. so we started talking and you were like, ah, oh. I was like, how was your day of fishing? And you're like, Oh, it was, you know, it was, it was kind of weird. It was good, but weird. And you started telling me the story about how, you know, you were on this, this hot trolling bite, but like the thing that was weird about it was there was this big naked guy, like walking, <laughs> walking down the shoreline. My, my man had no shame. He was, <laughs> he was letting it all fly. Oh, I re- Oh God. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. So I thought it was hilarious. Right. It, it, and uh, anyway, like the, the very, I think it was the very next day I'm out there, right, on the water, and we're trolling, and we we get ripped, we don't catch a fish, and then the person who's in the boat with me, I hear him, like, all of a sudden go, oh, my God, and I it would look up, and there's the big naked guy just, like, right in front of us, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and then I think, like, maybe 60 seconds later, we caught a fish, and I kind of laughed, I'm like, well... Greg gave up his spot in a, you know, <laughs> the pattern. That's the way. See, that's that's how we used to. Uh, that's how GPS used to work for us. Is we just go, you know, naked people is how we. Uh, yeah, that's like early GPS. Um, 
Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that is early GPS right there. But no, I yeah no, I remember it's still the only naked wanderer I've ever uh, encountered down here. Um, I've, I've 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 ran into a few. One in Detroit. Um, he was again feeling no pain and just kind of just walking around. Uh, so yeah, all kinds of good stuff, but it, uh, yeah, yeah. So Josh, you spend most of your time, like, um, where, where, where do you spend it? Vermilion or where are you doing your stuff? Yeah, I spend, uh, a little over half of my season on Lake Vermilion. I'm there for like most of the summer months. I kind of, I guide in the Metro for like a week or two and then you know, the water starts getting warm and the, plus the bite, the open water bites just, you know, sure. good, pretty quick out of the gate there on Vermilion. So I'm up there most of the summer and then I come back and I'm usually on, you know, the metro area lakes, a lot of it on Minnetonka for like late last week of August, September, October. And then I, I always love to go back to Vermilion for those first three weeks in November and somewhere in there I sneak away each year. I, I try to do uh kind of just market it to my, my repeat clients, I do a few, I call them Lake X runs where I go to, to some, you know, some place that's either new or, you know, doesn't have a lot of fishing pressure, either low density, big fish swim down type stuff, or, mm -hmm. you know, something where there's a bunch of muskies where there's not supposed to be and no one's fishing them. Um, but I do a few of those and that that's kind of, kind of how I do my seasons, I guess, for the most part. Sure. And then you got the, the tackle company that uh, um, you started when was that two years ago? You started that. Uh, we're just kind of past our year anniversary, so oh, okay. it's only it's only been a year. So yeah, I learned all kinds of uh, fun and not so fun lessons about running the tackle company over the oh, last year. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure with the um, Andy, you know nothing about that, right? <laughs> uh, I might have run into a couple of hoops to jump through. Uh, definitely, uh, you know. Luckily, you know, guys at the at the musky shows are you know helpful when it comes to you know learning things. You know, if you if you ask, you know, somebody you trust, you know, usually they'll 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 tell you what you want to know and, and give it to you straight. So that's my problem. I just ask anyone, drifters, naked drifters. Um, that's my problem. <laughs> What, uh, so Andy, you're doing, uh, what is your tackle company? I know you got the castable flies. You made me some jigs with your weedless system. What, uh, what all you got going on? Well, yeah, my company is months angling and, uh, I've been making baits for, well, I guess about 10 years doing shows. And, uh, um, I, I guess I pretty much just wanted to make something a little bit different and, uh, you know, weedless was always kind of something that it really spoke to me uh you know with the places that i always fished you know which is uh you know i i grew up on on josh's side of town uh west metro uh you know i used to fish independence and uh a lot of lakes over that way minnetonka uh, but now i live on the east side of the metro and, and i fish uh always fished uh, lakes in polk county that were weedy uh, if you know the Metro at all, you know that, you know, there's a lot of Eurasian water milfoil around here. So, uh, no, no, no shortage of weeds. I'm sure Josh can, you know, definitely attest to that, but, uh, as well as the Hayward area, do you um, ever do you know, a um, lot of flooded, do you do the areas, St. Croix? You know, do you ever fish yeah, the St. Croix? I used to actually guide it, uh, oh, nice. for about four years. So do you do any um, guiding Andy? Uh, I, I hung up the guide in a couple years ago, like, uh, kind of when COVID started, just, uh, bait business was enough for me. And, uh, it was nice to just focus on one another thing. thing COVID got Andy's guide <laughs> service. Shit. <Yep. laughs> um, the, uh, but the baits were, the baits were keeping you hopping, huh? Yeah. I mean, it was already kind of heading that way. Um, you know, my kids are, you know, just getting to the age where, you know, they're six and nine now. So, uh, you know, the older they've gotten, the, you know, the less I've, I've spent, you know, out on the water, um, you know, just being home and, and things like that. And that's kind of how the bait business got started. Just, uh, you know, it was something I could do, you know, in free time and it just, it just made it work with, you know, our schedules here, uh, something I could do at home, 
you sure. know, whenever. No, that uh, that works out. Uh, that works out good, Josh. I didn't mean to cut you off with the bait thing. Um, what is uh, tell the people kind of what you got going on? Yeah, so we, uh, I've maybe you've had this fantasy at some point too, as as a guide, Greg. But I, we, we oh, started. This I'm glad you company. said as a guide because I've had I've had many. <laughs> Um, it's, well, it, it, yes, yes. But well, as a guide, yes. Well, you know how it is. It's like every year I feel like there's a new bucktail on the market and it's always like a new combination of blades, right? It's good. 10, tens and it went to eights and then, you know, eight, nine, nine, ten, And, but a lot of times they make like a, you know, a slightly different sound or vibration in the water. And so, you, you know, as a guide, you got to like have them and try them, but like it's getting to the point where it's like, my gosh, I got to have like 20 black and silver bucktails in my boat now, you know, and then, that and is, then what it's about frustrating. all the black, black? Yeah, black, 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 green, black chartreuse, black, orange. It's like I wish I could just have like a few black skirts and just have a little box of blades and I could like switch everything out. So we were uh, we were trying to design, you know, an interchangeable double clevis, one piece clevis, which we kind of figured out doing it why it hadn't been done before. It was really <laughs> hard to do. It took us like three years of like failed attempts. Uh trying to trying to get it going and i mean we caught fish on all of them and everything but it just seemed like every design had fouling issues or the blades would fold back too much for for my liking or the blades would fly off um those and, are that's what i like is when the blades yeah. fly off and oh, it just that's great. yeah and it just you, you look it, it looks like somebody really bad at skipping stones and they just <laughs> you know just plop out there and it's but but I you know I I have learned it, it really is it makes it um, easier to drag in uh, <laughs> with less blades. So I uh, yeah I get what you're saying, but yeah. So what did uh, so what did you uh, come up with? So anyway, we we were we were actually getting close to giving up. We were on like attempt number seven, and like kind of a blessing in disguise that like none of the other designs like worked out as well as we wanted because kind of on the, the, the last try before giving up, I was like, Hey, since we got to like remold this thing again, what if we like made the inside of the clevis system that these blades spin on? What if we made it square? Uh, just to, you know, make a different sound, you know, make, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you can have too much of a sound too, or it's too noisy and fish, you know, like doesn't catch fish, but we, we, we tried that. And as soon as we switched to that design, um, I mean, like right away on Vermilion, I mean, I think I caught like three fish on like the first like three or four spots I fished with it. And what, and we didn't even have like a shallow bite going at the time. And, and then it just kind of went on where, I mean, we ended up like catching 38 muskies in a row um, that season in, in my boat on that bait. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure you're like this a lot of days too, Greg. I'm a guy where, you know, we start with three different baits every day. Mm-hmm. So, so I was going crazy, you know, like, oh man, this thing like works, but we still, you know, didn't have this, this, the, the mechanism to switch like the blades out, like figured out. And I was getting to the point where like, let's just glue the thing on and nobody even needs to know, you know, that you were supposed to switch out the blades. And then luckily, uh, Ben, my business partner, who's got the kind of the, the tooling and engineering background figured out a, you know, a mechanism, um, where you can actually, you know, switch the blades out, not have falling issues, um, and, and not have them fly off and, and everything kind of came together and, and we created, uh, the one that's what we named the bait. Oh, nice. Nice. It, uh, yeah, I've seen them. I'm looking forward to trying some this year. Um, on like the wood stint over the summer and, uh, it should be good. And if I blades fly off, I'm writing you a letter. That's, don't worry. Because I, I, and it'll be like, I'll pin it, but I'll, I'll hand write it. That way you know I'm serious. Uh, <laughs> or it'll look like my my manifesto. Um, but Andy, what do you got uh, going on? You got the castable flies. I uh, um, I got a couple from you uh, this uh, at the Minnesota show. So a couple, a couple weeks ago now, I guess. Um, yeah. And uh, you made me some jigs. I... I I went to it was I was like I was a, a wino looking for a um, looking for a drink around the musky show. You got jigs, you jigs. Where's the jigs? 
and uh, I finally uh, got over to you, and you were uh, you were willing to to try something for me. Yeah, you know, I, I I can pretty much build, you know, any of that kind of stuff. You know, adapt is kind of what you know what I've always done. Um, you know, people always joke, you know, at uh, at the shows, you know, my my little booth that I made, it looks like a lemonade stand, you know, where you can get <laughs> bucktails instead of lemonade. There you, <laughs> you go. Know? But I like uh, it. yeah, you know, if if, uh, if I got the parts, you know, I'll make them up for you know anybody, you know, the best of my ability uh, with the uh, with what's there. Um, yeah, I mean, the castable flies is uh, for sure what's been keeping me busy uh, the last uh, couple of years. Um, it's like uh, year seven right now of them, believe it or not. Mm. And uh, yeah, um, just uh, you know, I take a lot of time to make, so you know, I spend a lot of time making them where. You know, if I were making bucktails, I'd be I'd be putting a lot more baits out there. Um, but uh, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, making three sizes of them now. Uh, they're all weedless. Um, you know, tension loaded weed guards is basically what what really all my lures have. And uh, um, you know, it's a do you just a different gauge player going out. You know, to and then coming back and it sits under the hook if it. If, there's anybody who hasn't seen it so yeah do you andy i was gonna ask you do you make those weed guards or do you buy them and then add them to the hooks yeah that's the thing um you can't add them to it it's essentially well i guess in a way you kind of can but you have to tie it and it's not it's not as easy as people might think no no no, that's what i mean your wire that comes out you know you're tying Um, you're tying the weed guard to the hook with with wire or thread I'm um, tying it with basically, you know, uh, just a light gauge wire. Mm. And, you know, I've taken a lot of um, empty like thread spools and, you know, on my on my uh, fly tying bobbin. And, you know, I'll just spin up like a whole bunch of uh, monofilament line on there. And, you know, basically I'm spinning that around and, you know, bending it all with a round nose and a needle nose to get the desired, you know, length and, you know, all that good stuff. And, you know, I can do it on a standalone hook, uh, similar to the way that I made your jigs. Mm-hmm. Um, but the rest of the stuff that I make, like the bucktails, the buzz baits and the castable flies, it's kind of all on actually more of a wire form. And, um, what that allows you to do is it allows you to, when you don't want to use the weed guards, it allows you to, um, actually stow them. If, uh, sure. you want to put it over the bend of the hook, snug it down, and then it's out of the way. Um, it's just a luxury that you don't get when you're doing it on like a a standalone hook. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, that's cool, man. I I you know the the flies are definitely, um, you know, definitely something unique, and you've got the belly weight system you can do on them too. So that makes it uh, that makes it really cool. Um, Josh, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, well, let's talk a little fishing, both of you. Jesus, we might as well. We're on here. Um, <laughs> the uh josh what uh your season you you do some metro stuff what what part of the metro are you on well i i mean i've like i said i've been doing it i've been fishing musky fishing for 40 years i think and guiding for 20 so i've got a lot of hours on all the lakes but i minnetonka is our you know biggest lake by a lot that we have in the metro area I think sure it's the one that, that most people find intimidating and also no boat traffic i mean it is like yeah. a, it's like a it's like a <laughs> mill pond out there baby just it's like a rockefeller painting the guy the lady in the big bonnet a rod over the back just calm and serene until well, until you get killed there there's a reason that I leave for the, the, uh, you know, summer months, you know, they only have to deal with a week or so before we, uh, week or two before labor day. And then the boats start disappearing. Cause I know what you're, t- you're talking about. You fish tournaments out there oh. on the weekends and man, it is, it is, it's always not the best welcome back from Vermilion. My first day when I get back, I was kind of like, no question my, uh, my strategy when I'm there and then uh. we start catching them and I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah, but man, that place gets crazy. We're doing, uh, I guess the PMT is our third weekend of August this year, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's the third weekend and it's, uh, it's a Friday, Saturday tournament. That's the way all the Minnesota summer, I think it, isn't that a law between Memorial day and labor day? You can't do a Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday tournament. It's gotta be a Friday, Saturday. 
Yeah, I think that's the rule. And, and actually, I mean, on that lake, I think it's <laughs> – if you could avoid the weekend days altogether, it'd be more fun. Yeah. The only, the only good thing is, is we're done at one o'clock on Saturday. So it's, you know, you only, you know, risk your life half of the time, uh, during that. But, uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be nuts. Um, I'm sure. But so Josh, you're, you know, with your bait company and stuff, the bucktail, are you, uh, mainly a bucktail fisherman or just a little bit of everything or, no, I'm, I consider myself pretty versatile. I try to, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm more, uh, I'm more about processes. I have a lot of kind of, I'm, a, I can be a little bit rigid at times with, I like to fish like certain baits in a certain like sequential order and kind of the same thing with spots and things like that. So I'm, I'm a little more rigid about that than baits with, with the baits. I'm always plugging and playing in, in um, you know, on Vermilion, we had a really good run there where we, we use bucktails. I, I find myself using them like less on, on Tonka in recent years. Um, sure. Out there. But, uh, yeah. Well, that's, uh, what about, uh, what about you, Andy, when you were doing, uh, where, now when you were guiding, where were you? Was it Minnesota, Wisconsin? What were, or a little bit of both? Um, I used to actually outpost a lot up in the Hayward area. I've always, uh, vacationed there and had, uh, you know, a bunch of families, campers up there. I'd just crash in uh, just right up around uh, Jenks Bay, if you know where that is. Right off, off yeah, the right there off of the flowage. Um, uh, was it J? Is it J? No. What's the road right there? Uh, Highway B. Highway B. That one. Yeah, J, just like I said. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was uh, <laughs> B. Jinx, that's a cool place. He had the, um, uh, like, movable walls. In there, he had like baits on top of baits, right? Was that? Was it's, uh, I don't know if they were movable, but it's uh, yeah, I guess you they know were they're kind of like center aisle type of things. Yeah, yeah I suppose he could. Slide yeah, it's them. probably gone through different permutations over the years. Uh, I remember when Randy Armsbury used to own it, and um, you know now Mike's in there doing a good job with the with the shop, and you know it's right there on the corner. It's convenient, you know, on that side of the the Chippewa Flowage and all the other lakes there. But um, I mean, essentially that area, you know, you're looking at. Um, you know, different, all clarities of water. Um, you're looking at, you know, a lot of weeds. You're looking at, uh, you know, you got flowages, you got rivers, you got choices. I mean, that's essentially what, you know, everybody's, you know, loves about the Hayward area. So, yeah, I think it's that's easy to find some people to go out fishing with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's that area up there, man. It is loaded. I, I lived with Chad Kane up there in 2001 and, uh, we lived in Dow's Corner, which is now a bar. It was a bait store when we were there. And uh, all I remember is old dude in the backyard would shoot a cannon off every night at midnight. I don't know why. <laughs> but he built a cannon and he wanted to shoot it. So, I mean, what are you going to you gonna go up and argue with a man who built a cannon? Uh, no, no. no. I, I might have talked to that guy. I actually stopped there. My dad and I were up fishing there a couple of years ago and stopped. And uh, one of the one of the guys who was friends with the owner. So I don't know if he's the cannon guy or not. But, no, uh... this was a long time ago. <laughs> this was, uh, a gal named Vicky owned it. And, uh, she used to yell at us for flushing the toilet. Um, <laughs> it was <laughs> <laughs> only in Hayward. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Only we only do that one time a week. God damn it. <laughs> Bunch yeah, of I guess hooligans. back to what you were saying is, you know, between like Metro and there, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time, you know, obviously the St. Croix and Namakagan is, is, is all in between there uh, sure. with its entirety. And, and Polk County is always a place that I always would go um, with my dad, uh, my uncle, uh, he lives in St. Croix Falls. So, you know, we, we always spent a lot of time over there. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of how, you know, what, what I'm doing got started. Uh, Deer Lake is actually, you know, where, you know, you probably seen like old, in fishermen there's mm -hmm. there's one with uh um where they're out there in like 1974 you know but you know i grew up and started fishing that that same lake you know it was a great fishing lake for a real long time you know obviously obviously it's still in there it's not like it's heyday but um one thing that would happen is the weeds would grow up and when they get to the top they'd kink over and you know they grow another three four five feet mm -hmm. and if you get a crosswind to the you know to the shoreline you were fishing and you're just trying to throw a bait in there. It was just so maddening, you know, because every cast, every single cast, didn't matter what you do, 
didn't matter what kind of bait you threw, like you were coming in with something. So as soon as you got fouled up, I mean, unless you got one of those crazy muskies that's going to decide to to eat it with five pounds of weeds on there. That's my you know, favorite muskie right there. <laughs> right. Dumber than um, shit. But you, I just wanted to do something that would function better. And so um, that's kind of, you know, what was really behind, you know, me wanting to do, uh, you know, the weedless bucktail. So I worked on that for uh, kind of over the next winter and, you know, got it ready. And actually my dad was the first one to catch a, a fish on the weedless bucktail. Nice. And he got it on Deer Lake. So, um, well, that's, uh, well, that's pretty cool. You can get, uh, got the old man a fish. That's good. Yeah, hey, he was. He had a smile on his face, no doubt. What? Uh, um, well, cool. So, do you guys fish any of the same water? I know. I don't. I mean, in the metro there. Or... Josh, you fish like... east side. Yeah, I mean, I I I fish the Saint Croix. A lot of times, I just fish it for like the week before Minnesota opens, and that's about it. Uh, I sneak over to Baldy once in a while. I used to fish white bear a lot. Uh, before I, cause I used to stay in the Metro, uh, till like basically like the 4th of July. Uh, and mm -hmm. then I would head North and then I just, you know, that, that bike got so good on Vermilion and open water over the years. I just kept sneaking up earlier. So, cause that was, I used to lean on white bear a lot during that month. So, um, but yeah, I, I, uh, so I, I, I do still sneak over there occasionally. Um, it's been, a, I guess it's been quite a few years since I fished white bear now, um, it doesn't have anything to do with the Lowry Tunnel, does it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'd like to say it did, but it's just, uh, like I said, it's it, the lion's share. I, I think I've just become known over the years for Minnetonka and um, because I think a lot of people find it overwhelming and frustrating. I just, I get a lot more people like requesting that. Like I always give people a choice because I, I mean, and I'll tell just so everybody knows listening to this, like to this, I, you know, I, I always like to start with a goal of what are we trying to do on this trip, you know? And if it's learn Lake Minnetonka, then obviously that's where we have to go. But if it's catch a muskie, most of the time there is a much better option in the Metro than Lake Minnetonka. I think a lot of people, and they see the big fish pictures and they see like, you know, a lot of fish get caught out of there every year, but there's a lot of fishing pressure there too. That, that happens to catch those fish. And I mean, I think Minnetonka has the lowest population density by a lot of any of the, uh, the natural lakes, you know, you, a lot easier chance bumping into them just about anywhere else. But if your goal is size and you're trying to catch a 50, then I feel like it's, it's the best option if you're trying to catch a really big one, but it's just a low population. Do you, do you say you used to fish out West too then Andy? Uh, yeah, I still do sometimes, you know, yeah. it's, it's for me, it's, you know, like I don't fish the crazy hours, you know, like, like a lot of folks do. I'm, I just, I try to stay more family oriented, basement oriented, if you will, <laughs> with the <bait>. but, <laughs> um, you know, when I do get away, I usually get out of town when I'm going to fish, you know, whatever hours. So, you know, if I, if I'm doing something on around town, I usually fish around here. If it's a weekend, then it's different. I don't got to fight the traffic. You know, I'll go out, I'll fish, you know, Waconia. Um, you know, I like going there. Um, I'll fish Tonka every once in a while. Um, I've gone out to Sugar Lake. My nephew got a great one out there a few years ago. Um, it was just an absolute sow, 50 and a half. Wasn't, um, no, is Sugar Lake up towards like um, St. Cloud? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a, few, there's a couple lakes out there. Um, you know, I guess I don't go too much further west than that. Um, mostly I fish northwest Wisconsin. You know, I, I fish pretty much everything, you know, over to, you know, Chippewa Falls. I do the first Wisconsin chapter tournament. Uh, you know, I fish over in Lady Smith area, uh, up the Phillips, you know, pretty much just, you know, take all those counties and count them in. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, I'll ask you guys both this, what would be so like a spring, um, pattern, um, for you, Josh, let's talk maybe metro and then vermilion and then andy mm -hmm. will talk maybe a metro for you or you can do a wisconsin so Sounds good josh what do you think so you know if we're talking the first couple of weeks of the season um 
I, I usually, I'm usually not up there, but I have snuck up to, to do it in the past. Uh, I mean, there's usually, there, there can be a pretty decent bite on vermilion. It's usually, you know, the, the kind of traditional spring bite where you're fishing in the spawning bays, they're still either in them or, you know, if, it, if it's a little further along, they're on the, they're adjacent on the lead outs that kind of head out to the open water. And that bite usually happens for a week or two there. Um, and then, and then it shifts to open water usually um, by for sure. Usually the third week of June, June, they're all, most of the fish are out there, at least all the, you know, there's some small males that stay back in the weeds, but in the Metro, I feel like usually because we have, you know, a later opener in Minnesota, it's the first weekend in June. Um, and unless we have a really cold spring, the water temps are like pretty warm down here already. Mm-hmm. And the fish are long done spawning and most of the years like in recent times like i've been fishing suspended fish like opening day um and i might cheat a little bit like i kind of i i guess if i could pick i'm I'm kind of giving away some some juicy stuff here but that's all right uh i've talked about no one's listening my mom i got a cousin that does (laughs) and this lady that burps i don't it's weird. Greg, you should your backup plan should definitely be stand up comedy for sure. <laughs> this like. is this is my yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, you'll be fine. Nobody's listening. Guys, don't yeah, write yeah. this down. If you if you're out there, put down the pencil. Uh, <laughs> so so anyway, uh I guess in, in not not every lake has this but but minnetonka has it uh and i know there's some on white bear and there's a few other metro lakes that have the, this type of structural element where i like to call them sinkholes but mm-hmm. basically they're areas where you have like big shallow weed flats which you know a lot of times are spawning areas right especially if there's any kind of cup to them but then there's a depression kind of in the middle of the flat where you have deep water that gets to 20 plus mm-hmm. um and some of those, you know, some sinkholes are like small enough where you can like literally pass across them and other ones are, you know, can be the size of like several football fields. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just seems like, a a lot of times opening day in the Metro, if I'm on a body of water that that has that as an option, I'm definitely going to look cause it's, it's really easy to cover. Um, you know, and with electronics these days, even pre scope, I mean, just like with side imaging, you, you, you know, you make one pass through the middle of these things and you can usually see if anyone's hanging out, even if they're not behind your baits. Um, and then, you know, if you see fish there, then that's that to me, that kind of gives me the green light to go out to the big lake and look in the open water as well. Um, where if I, if I don't see fish there, I might, it might push me back and, and, uh, looking in the weeds a little bit more before I venture out into the full open sure. water. Sure. Andy, what about you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess as far as around here, I, I would definitely agree with Josh on what he said, you know, just based on water temps alone, you know, most of the time, you know, with the June opener in Minnesota, you know, it's, it's pretty much already gone, you know, on, on your average year. So, um, you know, where the fish have moved out deeper. So, uh, for that reason, I go, uh, mainly to Northwest Wisconsin. Uh, last year I spent actually the entire week, uh, up in the Hayward area, uh, kind of, kind of bounced around between Hayward and Phillips and, you know, other places around there. And, is this, uh, Andy, is this the opening week, the, the Memorial Day? Yeah. <clears throat> Memorial okay. Day. Yeah. Northern, Northern Wisconsin uh, sure. opening week. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, you know, there's a lot of different stuff up there, uh, but mainly I'm fishing flowages and rivers and just trying to figure out, you know, exactly where I'm finding fish, um, basing it on some water temps. Um, you know, if you get cold rain, you know, coming into certain places or you get, uh, if you're getting warm water discharge out of a, out of a impoundment or a cold water discharge, you know, you, you might, it might change where, where you're going to be finding some fish, um, Typically, I mean, we just move around a lot, so it's kind of why I'm not saying anything by name, because we don't spend too much time on really anything. Sure. Um, and uh, you know, we just move around until you know we're finding what they're doing. But you know, we're we're throwing a variety of baits. Um, you know, I I I'm I'm not a bait maker who just throws his own stuff. I mean, obviously there's there's the applications for it, but you know, I'm throwing 
a lot of different types of surface baits and throwing a lot of dive and rise. Um, <clears> just <throat> giving them, you know, throwing it out there until you find out what they want, essentially. Sure. No, I, uh, I get that. Um, but let's, uh, we'll transition on to summer. Josh, you're going to be, that's pretty much for a million for you, isn't it? Yeah, for the most part. Okay. So that summer period, let's say that July, August time period before it starts cooling down in like September, um, you know, is it, you know, for you, is it, is it a lot of a bucktail bite or is it, uh, are you finding, I'm, I'm sure you're finding some stuff, over, you know, as the years go on, you find little, little things, but uh, what, what, you know, how are you attacking it? Well, I got to I got to kind of preface this with like the history of the summer bite because it has that lake keeps you on your toes. It has evolved and changed a lot over the years. And I've been fishing it since I think 90, 98, 99, I think maybe was my first time there. Um, and it pretty much from like the late 90s all the way to 2016 it was always just like the same bite in the summer. You know, you could go on any like shallow shallow rock structure you know on the lake uh and there were muskies crawling all over it and bucktails top waters like you know pretty standard stuff and then in 2016 it it like changed where the fish started to become way more open water related like all summer long like they just they they were like spending very little time on the spots like that year i kind of figured out that they they basically, you could catch one at first light and then over the, it took a lot, taking a lot of lumps, you know, me and the other guides putting our heads together, but we figured out they were kind of like going out to the open water all day and then they'd swim back up right at dusk. So, but it was a trap, right? When you're guiding, it's like you catch one on the first spot in the morning and then it keeps you pounding rocks all day and, you know, and then nothing happens till like the last spot, you know, of, of the day or whatever, when it's getting dark and they move back up. Um, and then they weren't biting after dark either on the, on when they were sitting up there. So it was all kind of open water. And then, and then we were quicker to adjust the next year, but then it was like, like very little good shallow rock bite stuff happening for, you know, from 2016 to, to 2022, I guess it was, there was maybe like one year in there where there was a shallow bite that didn't last very long, but it was, we were all like just, you know, fishing open water or fishing like you'd fish the, the, the you know, those same shallow rocks you used to catch them on. You would be like two or three casts out, out there. And, and I think that the reason that that happened was um, we started to get spiny water fleas. Um, I hate and those. Like, and and an, an invasive, you know, like a little jellyfish looking thing. This is all, this is theory, by the way, not fact. So I'm, I'm willing to. Hey, if it involves a spiny water flea. You, you keep going on this track. <laughs> so, I mean, my theory is, is that, you know, so once they got in there, I started researching those, trying to learn as much as I could about them. And, um, you know, perch, uh, tulabies and whitefish will all eat those as a food source. Um, and so I'm like, okay, so b- basically what happened is I think we, you know, we had a food chain. It was always like a certain way in the lake. And then all of a sudden, like a new item got introduced that was never there before. And so it kind of started to change the behavior. I think I think what it did is it started pulling the, the perch out off the structure more mm-hmm. uh, than they typically were. So it was like the perch, tulabies and whitefish were all out there. And um, and then all of a sudden, boom. And, and like the, when I was telling you that story about the one before we caught all those muskies, that was kind of. Like I, I made this bucktail that we were fishing open water, but I was like, well, I guess I should try some, you know, some rocks or whatever. And, and, and it was like magic, right? When we started catching them and, um, on there, that was that same year, that was 2022. And then that, and then there was a really good shallow bite that year. And then, uh, last year, 2023, same thing, like really, really good, uh, shallow rock bite, um, again for, for most of the summer and it started even earlier last year. I mean, there were fish showing up shallow by gosh, like first, second week of July. Um, I'd say it's more typical. I mean, even before all that change happened, it, it, a lot of times it's open water till about first, second, usually second week of July is kind of in between time. And by the third week, you know, they're up shallow, at least historically before this all changed. And now the last two years, it, 
it kind of switched back to that. And I, and I think I'm, I'm hoping to go to a DNR meeting here in a month or so to get an update on the lake and muskie stocking and everything else. And kind of want to hear what their assessment is with where the spiny water fleas um, are at. Cause I, I'm seeing less of them, you know, uh, out there and, and thinking that maybe that's, this all, you know, kind of ties the whole theory together. And if they've kind of started to run their course and there's less of them, then, then maybe, you know, perch are hugging tighter, and that's why. I'd say we do the like they did on leech and just set up turrets, and you like with cormorants, and you just shoot the bastards. Yeah. <laughs> you see one, shoot it. Uh, see something, say something. That's what they. Uh, that's what they should do. What uh, Andy? Let's, what's some summer stuff for you? Summer around here, if I can find water temps that are suitable for fishing, you know. Um, I'll do a little trolling. There's uh, a lot of uh, tiger lakes here in the East Metro, and, you know, they're pretty readily catchable. Um, I like fishing them late afternoons and just getting down deep enough, see if I can find them usually, you know, something like 14 to 22 feet of water um, is typically where I run into a lot of fish doing that. Uh, If I'm going to get over to Wisconsin, I'm just really looking for cool water, you know, um, or any water as it is, you know, in the last few years, you know, by the time summer comes around, you know, we haven't been getting rain for a while. Um, you know, your, your rivers are getting skinnier. So, you know, it's whether it's like, if it's a one way float on a river, you know, I'll dump a 12 foot boat in somewhere. Um, you know, if the water's runnable, I'll obviously take the boat if I can. Um, you know, I can go anywhere, you know, I'll go north, but, you know, even in northern Wisconsin, you're not really typically getting too much cooler. So sometimes, like I mentioned before, you know, I'll look for like a cold water discharge type of dam, um, you know, where I can find water that's coming out from, you know, the bottom of the lake instead of the top, you know, and, you know, that way, you know, you might run into some more fish that, you know, you're you're not going to be dealing with the, the mortality that you might, but, as far as baits, like, um, you know, that time of year, if you're finding active fish, um, you know, if I can find fish up in the weeds, uh, you know, I'll, I'll actually throw a lot of buzz baits, um, you know, ploppers, things like that, get them to move, um, trying to, you know, find something that, that just gets through, try not to rip it away from them at that speed. Sometimes they, they tend to run a little bit behind it. Um, (laughs) That's always, that's always a good help when, when trying to catch one. Don't Man, pull it away from it. It doesn't matter how much you want to slow down. It still happens. You know, you know, you're not supposed to do it. You say, I'm, I'm not doing it because you think they have it. And then there you go pulling and you thought they had it and you pull it right away from them. So Ugh. it happens to the best of us. But, uh, um, one thing I do run into a lot, um, that time of year, especially August is just really, really, um, lethargic kind of like uninterested, kind of fish that just really need coaxing you know they're there like, yeah that's when the, especially flowages that are shallow and you, you know, know the reason fish... for that this it's an old it's this is i'm surprised you don't it's when their teeth fall out and <laughs> they don't bite no more and they, you, well, gotta, you gotta get a little more time so them grow back because they start as nubs and then they uh they grow back and that's i'm telling it's when their teeth fall out that's what a guy told well, me one day and he was uh he had his shirt on so he looked smart it explains those dentures that i caught exactly <laughs> yeah. exactly um i like but it slow stuff like I, I was gonna actually say like one bait that that a friend of mine threw was was a warlock and i thought that was really cool because just yeah. the way he was working it super slow and we'd we kind of look for like these saddles and like this this small flowage and 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 he just kind of got onto something that day, and was, was he actually he, got two fish. Was he throwing? Um, not to just just real quick. World, I I love those baits. Those are super cool little baits. Um, yeah. Bit bitten tackle made by um, shoot. Is it Ny- Is it Daryl Nyberg? I think it's. I Darryl. believe it is. It is Daryl. I can't believe that that just that literally came out of my ass right there. Wow. <laughs> um, but no. He, uh, they're nice. He, were you throwing the big one or the little one? Uh, it was a little one. 
And, you know, okay. it's for this body of water in particular. I mean, that's that's all the bigger you really need, especially that time of year. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh, have you, ever, have you ever thrown those, Josh? Yeah. Yeah. I've played with those. Um, I clients brought them in the boat. Not that I got anything against them. I uh, but yeah, they're, they definitely are seem like they're very uh, maybe up there with like a manta type bait as far as like just really like nice wide glide and easy easy to work yeah that's what i like is they're just an easy bait to give to guys that uh you know maybe new to it or not really good with glide baits and i think it's a good way to give them a little bit of confidence um and throw on a and throw on a glide bait but uh yeah i got some the big ones you can work really really slow um i've got those and and uh uh, the little ones you can really speed up too if you if you like. But uh, um, I sorry about that. I just you said <laughs> I hadn't heard anybody talk about a warlock in a while, so I <laughs> thought I would. Uh, yeah, ever since Buffy the Vampire Slayer got canceled, haven't had much warlocks. Oh um, man, that's out of my wheelhouse. It it is. <laughs> oh my god, it was so good in college is when that first came out, and well, I was pathetic, so I watched it a lot. So. Um, what, uh, we're going into fall now. Let's think about this. So you got the early fall, which is kind of when we fished last year, uh, the championship up on, on Vermilion. Um, it was like, when was that Josh? Like 26, seven, something like that. Or was that August? That was in August, wasn't it? I was trying to remember if it was August or it September. Was, it, it was, was August. It was, it was late August. So it was late mm-hmm. August. So let's, let's look past that and let's look into September, October, uh, November up there. What's, uh, are you, are you, you're still fishing it? I'm thinking, or are you back in the cities? No, I'm usually back in the cities around there. I mean, I have fished it, um, you know, those times of year too. So, I mean, I, I guess, uh, if we're kind of take, are we are we kind of doing early fall to late fall here? How, how yeah, yeah. Let's do this? like early fall to late fall. The whole transition. So yeah. So um, I mean, a pretty similar thing happens on both Minnetonka and Vermilion. Again, I'm giving away some pretty good stuff here, but uh, don't write this know, down. I, don't <laughs> don't you fucking do it. <laughs> Oh. But uh, I, I guess I would say, you know, and again, some of this is theory, but I mean, the, the first thing kind of transitional period we go through is turnover, right? And um, which is notoriously tough on, I think, most bodies of water. And I, I, I think, and I could be wrong, and you can disagree with me, Greg, and you won't hurt my feelings either. I'm I just, I'm going to fight. Yeah. I want a good <laughs> fight. <laughs> Uh. but uh anyway uh i i do think that it, it's kind of a time of transition for like everything in the lake right like weeds are dying the lake's flipping temperature wise i think there's just a lot of movement that's happening of all like the whole food chain from from minnows all the way up to muskies right like everything's mm-hmm. moving around and you know when you get into late fall you kind of know eventually where it's going to end up but it's not like it just shows up there like that day or whatever right it's like a process and so i think there's just a lot of a lot of moving traffic out there and so um if you're on a multi-basin lake which both vermilions kind of got like seven different basins and tonka's got you know a ton of them um i i focus my attention at least during turnover on the pinch downs you know, on, on Tonkas, it's a lot of channels uh, that, you know, kind of connect all the lakes. But if, if basically if a fish wants to go from one basin to another, it's kind of the only way through. Um, and so I, I really key in on those areas, on both bodies of water during that time frame. And, and, I, and part of the reason I think they're just passing through is um, I've had very limited success on going back on fish and catching that same fish later in the day when they're in those areas uh, I, i've gone back and caught fish a lot of times but usually it's like not the same one we saw earlier in the day so i, I do think they're just on their way to somewhere else but they kind of gotta gotta go through those areas to get there um i i definitely uh on tonka this is another weird difference between tonka and vermilion so on tonka on that time frame you know usually once i see like 57 degrees or so i'll start running live bait for at least my rod just it's an extra line for my clients 
um, and then usually having them cast in as far as baits go. Um, still will run blades, but I actually a mistake I made last year is I like weeded them out way too soon and kind of learned the hard way one of my last days on Tonka before I went back to Vermilion. You know, it's kind of one of those days where we were going to, going to go in with a goose egg and we were on the last spot kind of last last spot last few casts of the day type of thing and and ended up having a guy throw throw a bucktail on one of those bigger ones we have and and, and caught one right away and, and while i was happy i was kind of kicking myself that uh i think we probably missed out on catching quite a few fish for a few weeks there uh leaning too hard on you know it's that whole debate you, you know as a guide when you know things are going to switch it's like you, mm-hmm. you, you, you have, or I do anyway, like the anxiety of like, I don't want to be the guy like holding on to the old pattern too long when it's sure. not a thing anymore. Right. Cause at some point that happens where all of a sudden like blades just aren't going to get bit at some point. Right. Um, and so you want to kind of jump ahead to what the next thing is going to be knowing that you should still get bit on that and it'll just get better. And I think that was kind of a, a mistake that I made last year, hindsight. But sorry, I'm rambling here a little bit. But uh, but anyway, that you know that that's kind of turnover in a nutshell. But, but on Vermilion, like a really weird thing about that in the late fall and um, you know during turnover when I'm there is like it's probably the only body of water that that you know I can think of off the top of my head where when the water gets really cold, mm-hmm. that like my confidence in suckers is super low. Like See, I've had walk. a lot of people tell me that up there, and that's just yeah. hard to believe. Crazy. I, I know, and believe me, man, I've tried. And and I'm not saying that you can't catch them on suckers, but I am saying that if you caught one on a sucker that day, I bet you I caught like five on a rubber bait that day. Hmm. And uh, and I've, you know, I've seen it all. I've had guys come with me, you know, get all the spots from me, and then, well, you just probably weren't using big enough suckers, or I got red horses, or I got my special rig, you know, and, and then they'll, they'll – I got one here <laughs> named Cleveland, and he's yeah. going to do it. Uh, yeah, you're not naming them right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but anyway, you know, they're, they're, they'll be, like, the next day, you know, fishing, like, right next to me on some of these spots, and they, they just watch me get the net out, and usually after a few days, I break their spirit, and they, you know, put the suckers away and start casting like everybody else, so... Um, where on Tonka, you know, different story, you know, I have a lot more confidence in suckers there and, and just about any other body of water that I've fished late in the fall. So it's, 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 it's weird. I don't know if it's just because they're so focused on tulipies and whitefish that time of year on vermilion or what it is, but definitely like a difference between the two. Um, and then, so, yeah, so I, I'm usually kind of on Tonka through, through turnover and then I kind of leave to go to vermilion like the last week of October, first week of November. Um, and then I'm on, you know, I stay on, I usually try to book through the third week of November, but whoever has that third week kind of knows they're gambling. <laughs> we might, you know, yeah. I'm definitely always breaking through the thickest ice last, last boat out one year. I even tried to, to bribe like a barge guy to like break a path for the guide. Oh, to I get tell out you, one more day. I've done that on a few lakes that, you know, that, it was early on when I was up there, and they're like, "Yeah, let the you know, oh, you know, guys telling me, oh, we bust stuff like this all the time, as long as you go first. Yeah. And and <laughs> I, I think oh, I remember my... that post of yours, Josh. Oh, <laughs> you must have been fishing Tonka about a week after I said enough is enough. <laughs> yeah, last year we got froze in like la- the last night of the season. We literally like the lake. We kept running. You know, we were fishing after dark, and we kept you know like. The, the the trolling motor would you know uh shaft would like start hitting ice and like oh it's ice here so we can't you know can't troll through here anymore or whatever let's move and then we just got to a spot where like the, it was a full moon and the moon was bright and i looked and i'm like i don't i don't think there's any more water like i just see ice like i think the whole <laughs> lake's frozen and we had to oh man and then we had to break our way all the way back to the to the ramp and you know wrecked my keel guard again uh, it looks uh, like cookie monster got a hold of it yeah that's a mine mine is like that it uh yeah i've had yeah i've had several of them look that way <laughs> um but uh andy what about you how's your fall and uh late fall fall for me usually shapes up you know as soon as as soon as september gets here and uh 
the Labor Day holiday weekend is done, I am ready to start fishing around the metro again. Because, <laughs> I mean, other than like some daytime trolling in the in the summer, I kind of avoid it like a plague. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, I'll do um, I'll do basically, you know, I'll, I'll fish a lot of ploppers. I'll do some, uh, you know, some, you know, shoreline, whatever, whatever they're relating to. Um, but mainly health, healthy weeds is, is what I'm looking for. And that, that goes for, you know, any of the Polk County lakes, any of the, you know, West Metro, East Metro lakes is, it's kind of mostly the same program. Seems like the fish are typically starting to slide up that time of year. Um, you're looking for fish there. Um, just, uh, by pattern, I'm fishing a lot of low light, you know, or first thing in the morning. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll just go out for a half day and hang it up at 10. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause I'm not, I'm not guiding. I'm not worried about it. You know, it's like, if I get a half day, I'm great. Um, the rest of the time, like, you know, um, I do for sure. I'm, I'm going to be the third weekend. I'll be at the, typically at the first Wisconsin tournament. Um, you know, that basically is like a five county area from you know menominee chippewa falls lady smith um over to rice lake and you know down so um i guess that'd be chippewa dunn baron rusk and uh eau claire counties i believe so um that's the third weekend and you know that's a lot of water right there i mean Mm -hmm. if you think about that and that's a three-day tournament you've got you know, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, and every year it's different. You know, some years we've, it's been cold, um, like legitimately cold other years, you know, it's, you're out there in shorts. So, you know, depending on what they're doing, but definitely it's transition time. Um, a lot of times we're putting some pretty gnarly action on some dive and rise, just really popping them hard and letting them float up. Um, Winter, you know, is, is this a time too you might use your, your flies? Yeah, you know, the flies, like, once it gets cooler, typically, like, that's when there's more play or if there's more flow. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to attest to, like, more flow lately, but (laughs) it just hasn't been raining much, you know, the last few summers. So Mm -hmm. um, it's not like we're getting, you know, big, you know, bunches of eddies and, you know, higher flow where it's going to change things and, and, and suck those fish back up into those places. But um, mainly because we haven't been dealing with that. Um, the, the flies really shine and that's what I was going to get to, you know, later on in the fall is, you know, I start fishing a lot more rivers, uh, especially once the lakes start cooling off. Um, when I start seeing less than 50 degrees, I'm spending a lot less time out on lakes, uh, not, not avoiding them all together, still checking in here and there, but you know, I'm, I'm hitting a lot more flowages, a lot more rivers, um, fish the Hayward area like typically in October late September if I can get up there um I feel like for whatever reason up there on some of those darker lakes especially in that Chippewa Basin it it just really gets slow you know once it gets down to 50 degrees and you know that can be said for a lot of the dark water um up in northern Wisconsin and you know, for me, I just, I don't like, uh, I don't like dragging around a full live well. I just, I don't typically drag meat. It's just mm-hmm. not what I do. So, um, you know, a lot of guys are still out there doing that, you know. So for me, I just kind of leave those areas and, and I go south. So I'll fish, you know, downstream anywhere I can. Um, you know, any of those, any of those really three, four rivers in Northwest Wisconsin are all totally in play. So, Andy, so, let me ask you this. What, what kind of boat are you fishing out of? Uh, well, I got two, I got, I got really, I just got, I got my 1993 Lunker. It's really fancy. That, <laughs> try it. that is, I love vintage and that uh-huh. sounds right up my alley. Vintage. It's, you know, it's repowered. It's, you know, I've, I've had it since dirt. I mean, I think I've had that boat for 18 years and, nice. you know, I just, it fits in my garage and my garage isn't real deep. It's not real wide. So that's pretty much the reason I haven't upgraded. Mm-hmm. Um, the other boat I actually built and it's, it's just a small flat bottom and I did power it with a jet motor. So, you know, what size jet are you running into a lot of places? Yeah. What size jet are you running? 
Uh, it's a two-stroke 40, so it, it's, it runs like a 28. So is it a, you know? is it a tiller or a uh, um, yeah. console? Yeah, it's a tiller. And so have you, just, uh, yeah. have you hit anything with it while holding the tiller handle? Uh, I haven't, well, I've hit the motor, um, but I've actually hit the, I did put one hole in the boat, but it was super small. That's all that matters. Uh, I actually, I actually thought it was a good idea to, um, do a 180 out of an eddy. Uh, and I glanced a rock and it looked like somebody took an angle grinder to the bottom of my <laughs> boat, but it, it was just like on one of the, the draining, uh, you know, uh, parts of the boat. And so it was just the, the slightest little like toothpick size hole. And so I just uh, pulled the boat, let the water drain out, and then I put some duct tape on it and went fishing again. Nice. Um, duct tape. I love it. rest Ken- of the day anyway. <laughs> Kentucky Chrome. I love it. Yeah. It is It is a boat. You know, obviously you can access, you know, um, you know more places in. If you can get it in, if you can get it off the trailer, it's it, it doesn't make it, you know, fail safe. I know a lot of people think, oh, and you're just gonna get you're just gonna get one of those boats and you can just put it in anywhere, but it's totally not true. <laughs> no, you know, no, I I want a jet. Um, I just don't want to pay for a jet. Um, so if anyone wants to give me a jet, please text the text line. Um, well, I'm not gonna you, I built my that. own. It's not it's not the easiest. Um, I I did you know buy a stock boat and literally did all the work myself. Um, it was a about a twelve week project. It was a giant thing and bought. And it took me a couple of years, honestly, to get that thing dialed in. But, uh, you know, it does, it does have its times. It's, you know, it's a really small jet. Uh, you know, it's like I said, I'm, I'm not guiding anymore. So it's, it's me and another, you know, friend. It's so it's a perfect two man boat. And your friend doesn't weigh 473 pounds. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't. And he does. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't eat a hot dog starting in the middle. Um, yeah. it, uh, but, there's a lot of there's a lot of other good ways to access rivers besides you know just those kinds of boats and like I did allude to earlier you know having twelve footers to dump in, um, you know you see other guys out there with like uh, you know the basically the flycraft boats or whatever you know or the, the those are the um, the towies. Um, I guess I'm not sure the term, but you know you you know they're kind of like uh, like inflatable pontoons. And you know you can just kind of carry them in. Um, oh okay. no, there's so. a there's a boat brand called a towy that's pretty popular for like river um, boats. Pretty stable. Uh, I've yet to flip one, and I can flip any of those damn things. Um, yeah, they uh, well, there's there's people out there in kayaks too doing it. You know, it's I, I guess any way you can get on is a good way. Yeah, know, there was a really boils down to. There was a dude down here uh, on the lake actually last week got a fifty one on a in a kayak. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I didn't get anything that day. So fuck him. Uh, <laughs> that's that's how I feel. Um, <laughs> that's my positive motivation. Um, yeah, I guess in a nutshell, like you know, running down to like the end of the year, um, you know, once it gets to like november and we're still cooking you know like i think i hung it up just like the day before thanksgiving last year yeah um and you know i'm sure i could have fished longer but i had to start building baits um but you know running down the river is you know it's been great and um you know we had a good time doing that you know the lakes do get sluggish they get lethargic you can just tell like you'll be out there you know you get a cold snap and you go out a week later and and it's tough but you know you can go back out sometimes on some of these flowages and and some of these rivers and and you can find active fish so um but you know obviously you guys know it's you know working stuff slow that time of year um you know and and for me the flies are something that i throw all the way until they're bouncing off of ice i mean i i think a lot of people like don't realize that that's a bait like rubber that you can use right up to the end and it and it produces sure. and i i spend a lot less time throwing them in the summer you know but they they do have their their times where i can throw them in the weeds you know and, and that's like uh it's something that i can get through there and you know dodge them around but um in in the fall it's like that's that's just the time where we're you know i'm throwing those i'm throwing a lot of minnow baits and 
I, I basically got three baits and I'm probably not switching them all day. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Uh, what are those baits? <laughs> it's cheap. Well, a bomber long a, oh, you guys throw them. I love a bomber long a, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. Yep. What? Yozuri's nothing too huge. Um, depends on where you're fishing, how big it's going to be. The little Yozuri's. Well, like a five and a half inch suspenders, you know, about as small as I go, but yeah, yeah. Um, I like the eight inch bombers, seven inch, whatever they are. They're like a little bit more saltwater sized. Yeah, yeah. They um, usually have saltwater hooks. The, to find the uh, the those weird gray, you know, marshmallow hooks. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, Matsuo makes some, you know, that are a little bit kind of like that. Um, but mainly, you know, I'm working those just like with a wrist action, you know, it's a, it's actually just more of a rod that's, you know, the line, the pound test is made for muskies, but the rod is made more for like bass pike, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit less than you might, you know, normally use for muscle, but mm -hmm. my folks have always taught me to use those, you know, I've, I've been fishing with rods like that cause they, they used to do that back in the eighties. Mm -hmm. and it always worked for them and so if it worked then you know why not now it still works exactly um and uh there's a big rubber rod i'll use you know i'll throw like swim baits um i do like do like some of the savage gear baits um they work well uh they work better when they're re-rigged um but uh they work um things like that um, some straight, slow, straight retrieve stuff that time of year can really shine too. Um, you know, you get, sometimes you get a little bit happy on the, on the baits that are pole paws or twitch. And sometimes you just need something slow that just lets them, just let them come up and eat it when they're ready. Nice. Yeah. No, it's, uh, that's cool. I'm glad, uh, that, uh, those are some good tips right there. Josh. You know, we're getting close to the end here. Let's talk about in your baits. What um, what are, you've got? How many different sizes? Uh, with the one, yes. Uh, so we we started with an eight eight and an eight nine, mm -hmm. um, and they're basically the same size. So the the only thing that's different is the blade. And and keep in mind, you, can, you know, so you could you could buy an extra blade and make the other one. But then this year. We came out with two bigger versions that are actually a little bit different. We have a, you know, a, a ten ten um, that's got got a, like a one hex blade on it and one kind of standard smooth blade and maybe a little more traditional bucktail weighting on it. Um, I just I, we kind of did the two versions because I I like to you know I fish at night a lot. I like to throw big blades at night and. Uh, at night I slow down and, uh, we, we have another heavier version, which I'll tell you about in a second too. Uh, but that one, if you're, you're throwing that heavy one and you try to slow down at night, especially on vermilion, you're in the rocks like all the time or dredging weeds. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we, we started with, a we have a, a nine ten that's is a little bit weird too. It's got like a, a double thick nine hex blade on it. And then, uh, um, standard 10 but a, a lot more weight it's like 4.4 ounces on that one so a lot of weight to cast in the wind if you want to burn it it doesn't pop out of the water on you it stays down good and um, you know on Tonka when we do use blades out there too we like to kind of slow roll the deep weed edges and get some depth out of them so it kind of covers those bases and the other frame um, with the 10 tens is lighter, but you know, like I said, you can, I mean, there's already guys that were putting 13s on them last year and catching fish too. So they, they hold up. So we, those are the, those are the sizes we have right now, but you can kind of be a mad scientist and put whatever blades you want on those frames. Yeah. That sounds like that's, you know, you can, uh, with the interchangeable stuff, it makes it really, really nice. And, uh, uh, yeah, should be good. What about, uh, you, Andy, how many, you said you had three sizes of the flies, and what about on the bucktails? Yeah, uh, pretty similar program there, too. Uh, three and three. So, uh, flies that... come in junior, standard, and mega, and the bucktails come in phantom, standard, and jumbo. So, <laughs> what's the same? Jumbo. That's yeah. the one I want. Give me the jumbo. Yeah, they're, uh, they're mostly, you know, tens on there. Um, uh, you know, fluted, uh, 
like Mag Indiana, they're like the old forty thick. So, you know, mm-hmm. it definitely get some riding down. What's um, um Andy, what's the biggest fish you know of caught on one of your baits? Uh fifty four and a half on Jesus. actually one of my surface builds, which is a chopper prop combo. A chopper prop combo. That sounds cool. It's, what uh, uh... it's chopper blades on well my buzz baits are if they're like uh like similar to a bass buzz bait, think like that. It's mm-hmm. something you know. Obviously, if you throw it out there, you're gonna want to start reeling before it hits the water. Sure. Um, and uh, you know, they're with my weedless. It's a treble hook. Um, and then the blade is really the only option that's different. So my first option was a delta. It's just your standard delta F blade. Mm-hmm. And that's great in the slop. Um, but I had uh, I had this add on. Um, that I, that you can just, it's like a little attachment you can put in front of the flies just to give them different action. And one year at, the, at one of the shows, I had that and a guy, uh, had asked me to, to make one of my surface builds and, and put that on there because the blades spin opposite directions and I got them spaced so that they clang into each other. So they're incredibly loud and he wanted to throw it on Leech Lake and throw it in the reeds. And so I just built him that custom one off. And literally he just went out and smoked the 54 and a half on it and sent me the picture. You know, it's just, it was just long as the day is long. You know, it's just, it wasn't a big fatty. It was like a June fish just had a big old head and just a really straight long body on it. And yeah. So I decided, well, this one should probably go in the collection too of uh, something that people can get regularly from me. Sure. What about, uh, what about you, Josh? On the on your the one bucktail, what's the biggest that you know of? Well, we've only been out for a year, but we we got lucky, and uh, somebody who fishes the St. Lawrence, a guy who and he was relatively new to musky fishing too. It was one of those like great stories where he like he he bought it, and I, I think he it was just like a handful of casts, and he caught a fifty eight uh, on it and wow, sent us man. a picture. So we were we were pretty. Uh, pretty stoked to uh to know that you know something that we created like produced a fish of that size in its, its first year of uh existence so it, it was a uh, kind of a cool moment finding out about that well that's yeah cool. i thought it would have come on vermilion for you that's that's incredible man <laughs> that's a that's a big what about on the flies there andy uh the biggest you know the biggest you think you know on the flies uh the, well i only know what people tell me but uh people lie they're shitheads <laughs> yeah uh 52 incher nice. on the chippewa flowage on uh one of the standard size cast wolf flies my god on the chippewa yep. flowage that fish had to be a 107 it uh, was a uh, pretty nice it was a pretty nice fish so. yeah that's a big old uh that's a big old fish no matter where you're at but on the flowage that's something to get one that size um they're uh yeah, that's that's cool. What uh I've been asking guys this, uh Josh, do you listen to music when you're uh, out on the water? Uh usually not when I'm guiding. If I have the right people, uh though, we will. Uh Well, what kind of music you like? You can't play it for everybody. Is this some kind of yeah. like some kind yeah, of like I'm a, I'm, real folky I, I, or something? No, I'm a hip hop head actually, oh, uh, but awesome. not most of the stuff that you'd probably listen to, uh, like Lizzo or hear, like on the radio. So, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I noticed that it was kind of funny. We were joking how I, I mean I have like a, a, I have like I listen to a lot of music. I think my Pandora has like 249 stations or something like that. So uh, I, I've well, gone through, yeah, I've gone through all the you know stages in my life where i you know was a metal head and liked alt rock for a while but i i've always liked rap and hip-hop music too it's just a certain i don't know i don't i don't like a lot of the new stuff i mean I, there's new stuff i like but it's not the stuff that you that, that's out there in the mainstream so like give so, me we were, give me somebody new i want to i want to okay. i want to get in there and and get my rap on all right uh, uh, what do i need to do here. Uh, uh, well, and we have a pretty good, like hip hop scene in Minnesota here too. So there's, uh, there's prof, uh, prof. 
Yep, Prof, Atmosphere is another one I like a lot. I've been to quite a few of his shows over the years. Um, and, like, some old school stuff, too, like some guys who aren't around anymore, like Black Blackalicious. Uh, Blackalicious. Uh, That'd be the na- Andy, the name of your next bucktail, Blackalicious. <laughs> and, well, dude, the muskies make it love tasty. Blackalicious. Well, I'm not joking. <laughs> well, I know, yes, I know several people that like Blackalicious. Well, I'm uh, putting some iridescence in there to make it Blackalicious. Yes, yeah, so you got to get the licious in there. That uh, <laughs> that Blackalicious, I don't know that one, but that one that one sounds fun. Um, yeah. that uh i like that All right, andy do you like do you, are, are you a music guy in the boat uh in the boat um surprisingly not that much i mean you know if i if i got the wife out there with me and she's like sun tanning in the back or something like mm-hmm. you know oh well, she's got whatever she wants on usually if i'm fishing i'm i'm mostly just fishing uh you might find me pull up a football game in the fall but uh um actually when i'm tying i do a lot of uh listen to a lot of music all right what are you listening to when you're tying you got a you got a a new fly in front of you what are you what are you putting on uh any of about 20 of these records that are kind of queued up on the on the hot table i got uh i got a black rebel motorcycle club record on there right now and uh i don't know i've been listening to this and you'll know us by the trail of dead album for i don't know a lot of the winter it's pretty good what is that you're talking about? Uh, <laughs> the Trail of the Dead. What is that? What kind of? I mean, what kind of music uh, are we talking about here? It's like um, kind of like newer prog rock. So if you like Pink Floyd and you want to add about forty years, then you go there. Yeah, I never. We I'll were check it out. T- we were talking about Pink Floyd in the boat today, and I, and I'm I'm just one of those. I was like, I don't get it. But it's like, actually, it's more like, in some ways, it's like, I don't know, I guess it, it's got like more of like a skater kind of mentality to it. You just, you'd have to hear it, I guess, to properly do it. I mean, they go all over the place. So I like things that are different. And, you know, I mean, I listen to, you know, old, like classic rock. I've got, I mean, I was buying a vinyl when people were unloading it for nothing. And I'd buy it at the thrift store for you know, two, three bucks a copy. Nice. Um, so I got a whole bunch of it here. You know, I got old blues. I got, you know, you know, new stuff they put out and, you know, I mean, I'll fire up Pandora like Josh was saying and, you know, yeah, I listen to a lot of stuff. That's what kind of keeps the juices flowing for me anyway, at least when I'm working. Nice. Well, shit, you guys got all kinds of cool stuff happening. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you mentioned some artists around here. I know. So <laughs> uh, me, I listen to a little bit of everything. It depends how I feel. Um, I, uh, right now I'm listening to a lot of Zach Bryan, um, Tyler Childers. I love him. Uh, but don't be surprised if you go my boat and we're playing Lizzo cause it just makes me laugh. And, uh, <laughs> well, she's from around here, man. <laughs> thank god you guys are so lucky um the uh so no that's uh yeah no i listen to a lot of stuff i i listen to god today just today alone we listen to zach bryan tyler childers um billy joel death leopard um might have been some Godsmack in there and Conway oh, yeah. and Conway Twitty. Yeah, I got some pyromania here on vinyl, so well, there you I'm go. right there with you. Right there <laughs> you go. Yeah. No, I I listen we listen to a ton of stuff. It just depends on what mood I'm in or if I'm I'm guiding someone that's young and like 25 and 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 they're and they you know, if they don't know who someone is that I do that I feel like they should, I make them listen to it. <laughs> Um, there's and, definitely uh, been some times out in the boat where you want to like have that little bit of icebreaker with your, with your customers, you know, you want to, you want to like say, all right, you know, let's, let's like relieve the tension. I don't know if it's like just been a tough day or somebody just lost a fish or they just broke one of your reels and things get a little <laughs> weird, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's when I lean on the music seriously. Like what? if I would be real about it, it's like when when things are slow, you you're trying to like bring the levels up in the boat. Like you can like the the attitude's a little like too somber, and so you're trying to feel out your guys. And usually it starts with what kind of music do you guys like? And you just you start know? blaring and, and the then, Lana Del Rey. That would be. <laughs> That would be pretty, f- <laughs> just, or Adele rolling in the deep. That's one that I like to uh, break out. Um, that's in my register too. If I decide to start singing, um, that uh, usually have a good jam on the way to the on way to the water, and that's that sticks in my head enough the rest of the day. I usually are not playing anything out there. Oh, uh, um, I gotta have something going. I like a little music. I don't like, like, just constant. I was somewhere. Where was I? I was fishing with somebody one time. It wasn't my boat. And all I wanted to listen to was death metal. I'm like, the, you know, after about an hour, I'm like, this is just... I, it's after an hour, and I don't even know if the song has changed. And apparently we had yeah. listened to, like, 40 songs. And I'm like, really? Huh. Yeah, I, I reach my end after about five, usually, and then I'm good. Yeah, I'm doing this is is well. I I reach my end for till I'm about five seconds, and uh, I'm done with that. But um, no, I think it's always neat to see what people listen to in the boat and stuff. But uh, Josh, how can somebody get a hold of you and uh, either go fishing, buy the one, and oh yeah, I I forgot you should have yelled at me earlier uh, with your uh, Musky Insider. What's going on there? Yeah, so um, Musky Insider is another project. I guess it's been about, I think it's been about five years now. I think it was 2019. Nick Linder and I started it. It is a digital musky publication. So we uh, we put out a newsletter. We actually do one every week. So we do 52 issues a year, um, and it is completely free. It does not cost anything. It's delivered by email, and if you want to learn more about that, you can must go to muskyinsider.com with a Y and uh, we try to make it hard to look around on the site without getting asked if you want to subscribe. And then once you are, you, you know, you get uh, lots of uh, up-to-date musky content every week. It'll come to your inbox. And then, um, and then we started insider pro this last year too, which is a subscription deal where um, people do have to pay some money for that. But we, um, you know, we got a lot of really good uh, guides and fisheries biologists and stuff lined up from all across the musky range. And we do live Q and A's with them. We have a bunch of, yeah, like, I don't know, 20 hours of virtual classes that we have on there on a bunch of topics and stuff too, and give out discounts to people. Um, you know, uh, our members get discounts at like tackle manufacturers and retailers and stuff like that. So that that's a real, real quick on that. And uh, you can find all that at muskyinsider.com. The bait company, um, the lure's called The One, but the name of our lure company is called Angling Revolution. So you can find those at anglingrevolution.com. And for my guide service, um, it's promuskyguide.com. And it's musky with an IE, even though the other one's a Y, don't ask. Uh, just, just how we did it. Um, and that's where you can find all my contact information about my guide service and, and where I'm going to be and rates and all that good stuff. Yeah. I just want to say about Josh's, uh, um, uh, musky insider it, it, for anybody who's thinking about doing it, I I've actually advertised with them and I found it to be incredibly effective. So there's that. Um, it's, uh, obviously entertaining. I like all the things that you put in there every week. It's just cool to see all the little snippets you know a lot of times you know it's just a good amalgamation of things that are you know brand new in the musky world whatever's going around online so i I think it's a great thing that you're doing well thanks i i appreciate that and and my little joke is we try to make it the right length so when it's uh when it's time to wipe you're done reading it exactly (laughs) Exactly. uh but yeah it's it's grown a lot we i think we i don't know last time i checked we had like twenty five thousand subscribers so we know there's a lot of people out there uh reading it and looking at it so and and thanks to everyone who does by the way yeah what um andy how can somebody get a hold of your baits um urinal advertising or anything uh uh like that well, I'm working on uh, getting some, you know, special rates on some urinal advertising out in your area Just right now. But... Every time you take it, go to the bathroom, bring a sharpie. I want to well... know. I want to know what new bait you're making and your political opinion. 
Well, then they're going to have a mustache on my fly. So. There, you <laughs> there you go. I'd call it the Sanchez wipe. That'll be a that'll be a good one. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty easy to find. I'm just at munsangling.com and uh you know, anything you want to find, like I'll spell my last name. It's M U N T Z Tiger Zebra there at the end. So, um munsangling.com and basically like I try to put everything on there. I try to keep it pretty up to date. Um you know, I do a lot of just direct um to people. So, uh, like a lot of the stuff that, you know, I bring to the shows and, you know, I've uh I I just have on there and uh um you know there's uh anything else if you want content videos you know to see what's going on with the stuff or anything new um it usually comes across like the the front page banner on there um that's uh otherwise Instagram and Facebook month angling nice well hey guys I appreciate you coming on here with me tonight I'm always looking for guests and uh you guys uh hit it out of the park tonight and uh you're able to put up with my stupidness and uh <laughs> i uh, i really enjoyed it and i hope we can do this again sometime um before i get off here though i want to reach out to anyone uh that i you know we are looking for content i need uh video content i whatever you got i will take um doesn't have to be edited. I just I want I want some content to, just to help with the socials at the Muskie Hunter socials and stuff. And so uh, you know strikes or jumps or lost fish or you know falling in the lake, uh, anything. I'm all good with it all. So uh, you can always email me at uh, Battle the Beast at Gmail. Um, you can send it there, and uh, it'll go into a Google a Google drive and uh, I'll be able to pull it off of there, but you send it through battle the beast at gmail, uh, dot com. And, uh, also guys remember PMTT, um, coming up. We got a spring event here very soon on the uh, cave run. And then we're going to go to Madison and we're going to go to, uh, for, uh, not vermilion. That's where we went last year. We're going to uh, Minnetonka and then with the championship on the, uh, Eagle river chain, uh, this year, kind of new uh, new twist going to the Eagle River chain. So check that out at promusky dot com, uh, guys. Like I said, real pleasure, and uh, I will uh, yeah, hopefully get you on here again. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great season. Thanks a lot, Greg. You too. All right. Thanks, we'll... Greg. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the comedy. Hey. Yeah. Any... I, I'm glad I didn't get let down here too. I was I was hoping that I'd find out about whatever uh, part of your gear got messed up this time, and and evidently it was your truck with that deer. So. Oh. Me and stupid <laughs> damn. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I need to. What is it? Uh, mothers against. Yeah. Mad. Mothers against deer. That's what I'm at right now. We'll get you a sticker made up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I need. So, all right, guys. Great. You guys have a good Great. night, and uh, we'll call it to you later.